안녕 <웃음> Hello furry friends furry allies <웃음> Welcome to another video my name is Poshi um, Today we're going to be talking about furry philosophy philosophy for furries to follow as well as my critiques on the current state of it the current state of it being this book published in 1927 called Steppenwolf by Herman Hesse. Steppenwolf is the guide for furries just like how Thus Spake Zarathustra is the guide for Ubermenches in the same way it's a philosophical fiction that follows this main character through a pilgrimage in his life. This book follows a furry called Harry Haller who thinks he has the soul of a man and the soul of a wolf inside of him. Now Herman Hesse explains that there are other personas obviously but if you can't tell by the similarities in Harry Haller's name with Herman Hesse's name um, this is just relaying his own experience of having his own wolf persona. Herman Hesse uses he him pronouns to describe Harry Haller and not neo pronouns so just be aware that I'll be using he him pronouns um, as Herman Hesse does. As I was saying before Harry Haller thinks he has the soul of a wolf inside of him as well as the soul of his own man and this wolf soul hates society um, because society shuns him back. Herman Hess explains that there are two ways for this person to escape society. The first one is killing themselves and the second one is living monastically without the need for society somehow. But Herman Hess focuses on the furries that can't do either of these things and therefore can't escape society. So these furries need to find a way to keep going and to love living life and he proposes that in order to do this they have to reach this state of enlightenment which he calls humor. In order to reach this, in order to continue living in society, they have to realize that their belief that they have two souls inside of them, the wolf and the man in this case, isn't real. They have to realize that in reality People have a myriad of souls in them, millions and millions of them because they experience millions and millions of things in their life. So the furry believing he has only two souls obviously hasn't experienced life enough. So they have to find a way to collect more souls. And to do this, they have to go on a pilgrimage into the outside world and experience more things. Collecting souls, particularly, they have to kill a bunch of enemies and these enemies could be big bosses, mini bosses, um, even a lot of NPCs around just start attacking you and killing these guys gives you more souls and you can use these souls to level up certain aspects of yourself depending on what type of build you want, um, you can get better weapons, um, you can get better assets. And you do all these things in order to defeat even bigger bosses and the process goes on and on and on until you have like millions and millions of these souls that Herman Hess is talking about. These enemies that you kill are different types of sin. And this is where I have some concerns with fairy philosophy. He says, the way to innocence leads on even further into sin, even deeper into human life. And he continues to put similar things into this book about how sin leads to saintliness, about how you need to plunge your life into sin. I don't know if it's just me, but this doesn't make any sense. Um, there is no religious or spiritual teaching that says sin and pleasure leads to saintliness. Even if all of this was true, You'd think the sins would be big enough to amount to anything significant towards his stupid meaning of life of like sinning away into enlightenment. But the examples that Herman Hesse gives in this book don't seem that way at all. Herman Hesse's sins are liking jazz, dancing, sleeping with women, and doing drugs with black people. Those are the examples that Harry Haller goes through in his life. Herman Hess says, of all my books, Steppenwolf is the one that was more often and more violently misunderstood than any other. And it's not hard to see why, because he literally wrote a book called Siddhartha before this that was completely against the philosophy that is shown in this book. Siddhartha was about basically saying that pleasure is bad and relates it to, to the Brahmins of India and Eastern 
philosophy. But in this one, he gets to that conclusion, of course. He gets to the point where Harry Haller, the main character, goes through pleasure and sin and realizes that it's not for him and he's had enough. But he still tries to make it seem like it's needed. And I genuinely think it's just to cope with his sorry, sorry life. <laughs> there are quite wholesome things in this book that almost made me believe that what he was saying was true. It was really cute when he said stuff like, how can you know about life when you haven't even learned how to dance? Stuff like that. He could have gone on an entirely wholesome route of just making friends, falling in love, finding like a true happiness. But of course, Herman Hess never got that. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is Herman Hess could have avoided all of these holes, all of these fallacies in his theories if he just got his foundations right. That furries need to kill themselves. Thank you for watching. If you're a furry, thumbs up this video. I'm tired of talking about this book. Goodbye.